It seems like every other day in the JavaScript ecosystem, a new library or framework comes along and shakes up how everything is done. Things like Svelte drastically changed how front-end frameworks work because they made things so much easier, and the way that they compiled things beforehand really changed up the ecosystem for front-end frameworks. And there's lots of other things that have come out since then that really start to shake things up and you start to realize, wow, many of these frameworks are actually doing things better or differently than React. Is React getting too old? Is it falling behind? Is it becoming old news? A lot of people are starting to think React is dying, but is it really? The short answer is no, React's not dying. It's not going anywhere anytime soon, but it's a lot more complicated than you'd think. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And one of the many reasons people think that React is starting to die is because they see charts like this, where if you look at React, you can see since 2019, in this particular graph, it's starting to decline. Well, first of all, we need to understand what this graph is even looking at to figure out if this is even a meaningful decline or if it has any value. And then we also need to look at the actual percentage values. As you can see, it's only gone from 89% to 83%, and 83% is still quite high depending on what we're measuring. In this case, I'm looking at the retention graph, which if we look down here, retention is just the number of people that would use React again, divided by the total number of people that responded, and essentially it's saying the people that said would not use again. So 83% of all people that took the state of JS survey in 2022 said that they would use React again. And that's a quite good indicator. Even though it has declined from 89%, that's still saying that essentially four fifths of all people that use React would use React again. Now you will notice there are a few other frameworks that are higher rated. One of them I mentioned at the beginning, Svelte, they have a lot of really cool improvements that they added to it on top of React that just make it easier to use, which is why I can see a lot of people wanting to use Svelte over top of it. Solid is another one that has a lot of things added into it just to make it easier to use. And that's one thing that React does not have going for it. In general, doing things in React is a little bit more verbose than other you know, frameworks such as Svelte or such as Solid. Now, just based on this graph alone though, it's hard to say that React is dying. I mean, 83% is already incredibly dominant with people wanting to come back and use it again, which is great. And if you compare this value to other frameworks that I would actually say I would consider are dying, if we look down here at like Angular and Ember, these are frameworks that are on the way down. They're definitely declining. As you can see, they went from really high, you know, 60 plus percent market share all the way down to 40% and Ember is even worse. They went from 40 something percent all the way down to below 20%. So these are things I would consider that are, you know, on the decline and dying. As you can see, they have drastic drops between years. Like this is a 20 25% dip in people that would want to come back and use it again. It's a really big change. While with React, it's like a couple percentage points either way each year. Also, this graph doesn't explain everything. If we go over and we look at, for example, awareness, this says that pretty much every single person that took this survey knows what React is. Same thing for Angular View, which makes sense. Those are the top three big players and they've been around for a long time. Usage, I think, is the big one though. If we look here, React is by far and away the dominant winner and has been in every year this survey has been taken. 82% of all developers use React, while the next highest is actually Angular at 49%, which you may think that's kind of interesting because if we look at the retention graph, Angular is definitely dying, but there are going to be jobs for Angular for a long, long time because companies built their entire business on Angular, so they need to have Angular devs to continue to develop that code base. So obviously there's going to be jobs for Angular for a very long time to come. I mean, there's a reason there's jobs for COBOL developers, even though nobody actually writes code in COBOL anymore for new projects, but there are old things written in it, so they need developers for those jobs. Now, I'm not saying React is obviously declining, but even if it was declining, obviously there's still going to be tons of React jobs out there because tons of people are using react i mean 82 percent of all developers are using react which means you know essentially 80 percent of companies are probably using react in some way if they're using a front-end framework now it's great to know that even if react was declining that there's going to be jobs for it out there just like there are for angular but obviously if react isn't a downcline you don't want to actually spend time learning it just to realize that your skills are pigeonholing you into an older technology that has limited growth potential so what I want to do in the second half of this video is I want to talk about why I don't think React is actually going to die and why I think some of the new things coming to React are really going to revitalize it and make it even more popular than it already is. So to do a good comparison between React and another language like Svelte, I'm going to be using some code from Fireship. This is actually based on a video he did a while ago where he made the same exact application in 10 different frameworks. I'm just going to be using React and Svelte, but I'll link that video in the description and cards for you if you want to check out the full video of him going through all of this. But if we look here in the React version, if you're used to React, this is pretty straightforward stuff. 
We have some state that we're using. We're using a reference here for certain stuff. We have this effect right here to do some loading of data. And then we also have this effect right here, which is going to be adding some data into local storage for us. Then if we go down a little ways, you can see that we actually have the JSX that's rendering all of this information out for us. Overall, this application is super straightforward. It's not super complex. But if you want to do really basic things inside of React, it requires you to know a lot of really rather complex things. It requires you to know how use state works. It requires you to know how use effect works, which are both complex concepts. And also it requires you to do certain things. Like if you wanted to actually use this input value, instead of using a ref, I would need to set the value here to, you know, our input value. And then I would need to make sure that I also have an on change on here because we only have one way data binding. So then I would need to say set input value to e.target that value. So there's kind of a lot of boilerplate when you want to do this kind of stuff. We just go back here to what he had before. There we go. Also, if we wanted to be able to update our to do's the proper way, because right now the way that they're doing it with Fireship, he's actually doing it in a way that could lead to bugs. We would need to use the actual function version inside of here instead. So we would do the function version that has the previous to do's. And then we can come in here and essentially just return this. There we go. And this would just be our previous to do's like that. If we wanted to make sure that we were doing this properly and also this local storage to set the items would need to either be inside of here somewhere or it would need to go inside of its own use effect that depends on our to do's changing. And again, you can see there's a lot of complexities and a lot of things that you need to understand about React in order to write what's really a rather simple application. Now, if we look at the Svelte application, you'll notice that the code is much simpler. If I open this up in the source folder, there are literally two files and this file is essentially empty. So there's really only one file in this entire application. And as you can see, this file is small. I mean, there's not very much inside of here and all of it is rather simple. We have our, you know, mounting here. So that's handling our different lifecycle methods. We have some variables up here for storing information. And we're just kind of treating this like a normal JavaScript application. We're just saying, update this variable, update local storage. And it's just automatically going to re-render and do everything for us just by changing around these variables. So it's very easy to get started because it works more like normal JavaScript. I don't need to understand how immutability works. I don't need to understand how all these crazy hooks work. I don't need to understand how the virtual DOM works and all these other things like compiling and bundling. All I need to know is just how to modify some variables and it's just going to do everything automatically for me. It's kind of magic. These features that Svelte bring along and some of the other frameworks bring along that make writing your code easier are some of the things that React really lacks. And that's one of the reasons that people think React is kind of doomed and going downhill because it doesn't have all these nice, easy to use features. But the one thing that React does have that most of these other frameworks does is not only a robust layer of libraries you can use on top of it, tons of actual support from people using it, but it's also extremely customizable and it's going to work for almost any situation you need. One bad thing about things like Svelte that have a lot of magic is it becomes difficult to actually do certain things because sometimes the magic is a little bit difficult to understand and you need to really understand it at a low level in order to do certain things the right way. Well, with React, since it's a little bit more low level on its own, it's a lot easier to do some of those more customizable things. Now that on its own isn't enough to make React the winner in this case, but there is a new feature coming out for React called server components, which I really think is going to skyrocket React. We just close out of this real quick. You can see I have the documentation pulled up for Next.js. The nice thing about server components is they're gonna be in pretty much any framework you use, whether it's Next.js, Remix, Blitz, it doesn't matter. Whatever you're going to be using with React for your full stack framework is going to include something related to server components. And as these become more and more fleshed out, more and more frameworks are going to include it. But server components essentially give you a way to really easily render out components on the back end and then serve them to the client side. And it's going to get rid of a lot of the really annoying parts of React. Because like I said, doing that use state and use effect stuff is kind of annoying, but it's not too bad. It's fairly easy to work around. And a lot of times libraries take care of all that for you. But what is really annoying with React is making sure you deal with all of the data fetching and stuff that you need to deal with. So you have to fetch data from the server on the client. You have to deal with making sure it's in sync, dealing with loading states, error states, and so on. All of that is really annoying. A lot of the newer libraries kind of take care of that for you where they make it a little bit easier to do. And that's kind of what server components is doing for React. It's making it so that you don't have to worry about doing all this data fetching on the client. You do all the fetching on the actual server, and then you just send down the information you need over onto the client. So as you can see here, you kind of have your server stuff that does all your server stuff, and then you have separate stuff that runs on the client for handling the different interactivity of your application. If you've been around for a while in the web development world, you may realize this looks just like a normal web application, like way back in the PHP days. And I think that's actually a good thing because React is going more towards that you know, server-client kind of relationship instead of pushing everything to the client 
are now pulling back and taking the stuff that should be done on the server and putting it back on the server, which makes writing your overall application much easier to do. And as you can see, if we just keep going here, it just does a lot of stuff for you. As you can see, there's a clear separation between what should be done on a server and what should be done on the client. And this makes writing your code easier and makes connecting the two easier. And overall, it's going to make a lot of the boilerplate, annoying, difficult stuff that React has to make you do to do all that data fetching and syncing up all your state. And it's going to get rid of a large majority of that. This is why I think that React is definitely here to stay. If you asked me maybe a year ago, you know what, are some of these other frameworks going to take over? I was like, hey, you know what, some of these frameworks are really cool. They're doing a lot of great things that React should think about or should think about doing. And now React has seen what a lot of those frameworks are doing. And they're saying, you know what, we have our own way of handling this kind of stuff. We're going to clean up React, make it easier to use, make it more of a server client relationship, deal with all that server side generation for you. These things that these other frameworks have been doing for a while, React is now finally getting around to adding that into their own framework. And it's going to make it so that React lasts so much longer as well. So if you've been holding off on learning React because you're worried it's going to get overtaken by something else, don't worry. React is the number one right now, and it's going to continue to be number one for quite some time. And if you want to actually learn React, I highly recommend checking out my full React course. It covers every single thing you need to know about React to go from knowing nothing to being an intermediate React developer. I'm going to have a link in the description to that course. Right now, the course isn't quite complete, so I have an email field. You can just enter your email, and I'll let you know as soon as it's done. But if you're watching this far enough in the future, it may already be done. So if you're interested in learning React, I highly recommend you check out that course linked in the description below. With that said, thank you very much for watching, and have a good day.